Yo guys, Josh, Project Torture, material video number nine. This is a requested video. I've had a buddy of mine and a subscriber of mine, Kano Eyes. You guys check him out. Ask me about, you know, fading an object in and out, and I'm going to tell you how we do it. I got a couple ideas for you. That's why I'm going to show this tutorial. And by couple, I do mean two. So let's get started. Right-click material. I'm going to name it Translucent or whatever I spelled. And we're going to go jump in and we're like, hey, how we doing it? I'm going to show you how. We need to right click here. Not click, just click on the thing and not make it opaque. It needs to be translucent because we do need to be able to see from it. Just hold the hold the number one and get that thing and set it to the number one because we like the number one. And as many times as we've done this, I hope you guys remember, time, sign, and some of y'all maybe see where we're going here. Bias, very good. But we'll plug this into this and this into this. And it, it, it's creating the effect we want. We're just going to hold M and plug this into the bottom and this into the top and plug this into opacity and you already have the exact effect you're looking for it's going to be pulsating in and out it's like fading fading in fading out blah 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 and what's cool about this is you can take this material and just drag and drop it on any object in the world now of course i wouldn't recommend doing that in most scenarios but if you just want to see how the look works you can literally just do that and you're like oh ho, 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 i'm talking anything i don't care you can put it on a wall if you want i definitely wouldn't do that if i were you but you can put it on this bench it's obviously not keeping the material because the material hasn't been set i'm just affecting the translucency but we'll control c that control c that and control c or control z all three of those and that's it so it's a pretty cool trick right well you may want to affect that in blueprints and i understand but we need a parameter so we can pull it in there and since we only need a one instead of a three or a four let's just right click type in scalar parameter and you'll see it right there and you're like okay we'll plug that into opacity it's set to zero so it's gonna be see-through but we're gonna name that fade with a capital f with a capital F. Now, we got our material there, and we've got a scalar parameter there that we can affect. We just have to figure out how to pull it in via blueprints, and I'm gonna show you. So we need to create a blueprint, but I wanna be able to use one of these things. So I'm gonna right click on it and find it in my content browser right here. I found it in the props um, the props folder here where the Unreal gives you some stuff to play with. These are one of their items. I'm gonna right click on that thing though and go to asset actions and create a blueprint using that. Set it in the content folder, add a BP to it. So I know it's my blueprint and I'll save that and be done and I'll open it. So here's the cool part. I'm gonna go ahead and get back out of here, go to this main tab, go to the content and drag one of my things out here. So it looks just like the other guys. Size him up, make him pretty so he's not jealous because if he's all tiny, yeah, whatever. But anyway, we'll go back to him and we're affecting him right here. And we'll go to his event graph, and here we go. Let's get started. Well, let's drag him in here. He's called Static Mesh. I have not named him yet. You can go ahead and do that if you'd like, but I'm not going to for the purposes of this video, just to get through it quickly. We're going to drag a wire from him and type in Create Dynamic Material Instance. You've probably seen me do this before. We would set colors and things. Well, we're going to set another value. It's just going to be that opacity value. So it, it was called, uh, what, Translucent? Uh-huh. There it is right there. Drag a wire with the blue one here and type in, instead of set vector parameter value like we've done before, type in set scalar parameter value. You, know, you get what I'm saying? Like it's just exactly what you're doing. Like type in the word fade with a capital F with a capital F. Okay, but anyway, we need timeline because like now you could just set at the beginning of the game, it's just going to go bam. What do you want it to be? One being completely full or zero being see-through completely. Well, we don't know yet. We want it to you know, toggle back and forth kind of like you were saying. Do the basically the same thing the uh, material was doing. So check it out. Even though it seems simpler in the material, you, you have a lot more flow here. You have a lot more things you can play with. Drag that into play from start and drag update into that. Okay. Now we just need a float output to go into this float input. So create a float track. We'll make it uh, 0.5 seconds long because we are we just work quick. We are so fast. Zero and zero. Holding shift. I apologize. And creating a dot. Creating a creating a timeline little node there. And uh, zero and zero for the first one. We're going to do it again. And we're going to type it at uh, 0.25 for the for the time. And then all the way up to one for the power and then back to 0.5 at the end of our timeline there and we'll put it back to zero now you can't see nothing just drag these two and adjust your resolution drag a box right click make it auto because i like the blending i like the curving i like the i like that line it makes me feel strange i'm gonna close this one and now i got the the output here the input there and i plug them in and now i've got everything set up so basically at the beginning of the game it's going to create a dynamic material instance of translucent and it's or the translucent which is the name of the material and then it's going to set a timeline to adjust this but I need to double click on here and set it to looping so it does it forever and now we can go back and there it is and let's F11 and Alt P and go see if it's doing it oh you see it over there? that is my blueprint 
That is my blueprint doing the same thing it is. So if you need to affect it super, super uniquely, blueprinting is definitely the way to go. If you guys want to keep it simple, definitely go back to the material I showed you first and definitely just set it up with the time sign bias method there and multiply it by whatever, you know, a scalar with set to one and you will be fine. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'm, I'm hoping I helped you guys. You know, a couple of my friends that helped me uh, made, that, made that make a little more sense. It's actually pretty simple. Like I said, it's a little tricky sometimes to figure out how to... <laughs> Uh, pull certain parameters from the material into blueprints but as you can tell just remember to create scalar parameters and vector parameters so you can drag them in create di dynamic material instances and then pull those parameters and then use them function them recreate them use timelines however you want but anyway thanks guys for watching i'll see you soon bye